Hello everybody, welcome to my beginner's guide for vampire survivors. I'm Icon and in this video I'm going to talk about everything you need to know to have fun with this game. We're going to talk about the very basics of the gameplay, so I'm going to explain everything you need to know there. We're going to talk about how to put, put up a decent build, and we're going to talk about how to spend those coins and how the whole power-up system works. In the end of the video, I'm also going to show you how to evolve weapons. That's the big power-up behind uh, many items in this game. So if you're looking specifically for those, check out the description box. You will find timestamps for all the topics there, so you don't need to watch the entire video. If you want to keep out of spoilers, just turn off the video there. I put the evolution part at the end of the video for a purpose. So let's get started, start a game, and here we are. So it's very, very basic. WASD or the arrow keys move your character around. Weapons are being fired automatically. Monsters attack you constantly. Up there you have a timer about the t how long you survived. And when you collect these items, th th these gems here, your experience bar up there fills. Whenever the experience bar is full, you get to select a new item for your character. So as you see over here we also have a character stat sheet. I'm going to talk about that in a second. Every level up gives you the option between three things. There are weapons and passive items in this game. So in this particular scenario we only have weapons for selection. You, you sadly don't get any information if it's a passive item or a weapon. You have to... well, it, it, it goes without saying. When you're playing the game longer, but there's really no designator telling you this is a weapon and this is a passive item. So, but you understand that uh, rather quickly. So we pick up another weapon. Let's pick up this uh, blue flask here, and like I said, all the weapons get fired automatically. So now here you see those bottles are falling from the sky, leaving AOE fields. So every weapon has its own pattern, its own behavior. My magic wand here is always aiming for the closest enemy, and. Every weapon has its own quirks, stats, and whatnot. So let's press escape and check out the stat sheet. So this belongs for me to the very basics. So as you see here, your character has health, HP recovery, armor, that's flat out damage reduction whenever an enemy touches you, movement speed bonus. Here, you will only see things that will in that how your stats are influenced. So might says how much extra damage you do, area, how much more AoE your skills have, speed, how quickly your projectiles travel, duration, how long effects persist, like invulnerability, frozen enemies, uh, and also how long AoE fields on the ground linger, for example, the amount of projectiles, how much cooldown there is between your item usages. Keep in mind that this is basically attack speed. The more cooldown reduction you have, the quicker your weapons will fire. Luck is a stat which gives you sometimes a fourth option instead of only three. Growth is your XP gain. Greed is your coin gain. The more greed you have, the more coins you will gain. That's by the way, the coins are your uh, out-of-game currency to buy you permanent bonuses, so your character sheet will look sick like mine here. And Curse is something that has been introduced with the latest version. This makes the enemies faster, harder, and uh, more numerous. So the higher this one, the worse your situation is. Magnet gives you an information about how far away you can B to suck up uh, items into your position. Revival, reroll, and skip. Well, revival goes without saying, I guess. Reroll gives you the opportunity to reroll the entire shop thing, and skip gives you the opportunity to skip an entire shop. This can be sometimes an interesting when there are only options that don't fit into your build. So that's how you read all these things, and the basic gameplay looks really, really simple, but it's easy to pick up yet difficult to master. A couple of things are worth mentioning. The map is virtually endless. I could walk endlessly into one direction. The loot will not follow me by default. So when I walk too far away, my gems will not be around me. You need those gems to kill enough baddies. When you don't collect enough gems, you will be too weak and you will be swarmed and ultimately getting killed because you don't have enough damage for your enemies. So that's one thing you always need to move in a way that you can collect your gems. That might sound silly and easy yet uh, right now. You might be asking yourself, oh, well, shouldn't I? 
but when you're getting swarmed and the uh, screen is full of enemies, it can easily happen that you have to start walking only into one direction. If that ever happens to you, you need to keep in mind that you will eventually have to do a U-turn to get back to your item loot. The gems have come in three different colors. Blue is the lowest tier, then comes green, then comes red. The effect, I think, is pretty easy. There's always also these fire sources in the, um, over the map, like you see here, those braziers. They are looking differently for other levels. You can't really directly force your weapons to hit them unless you have directional weapons. But the TLDR of these things is they spawn coins and sometimes consumables. Consumables can be a total freeze of the enemies on the screen, one item that, get, that lets, lets you breathe fire and spit out horrible amounts of damage, one item that clears the entire screen for you, and one item that attracts all loot that has been spawned across the map into your into inventory. So these are the consumables you can spawn as of now. And yeah, well, the rest is survive 30 minutes. That's the basic game objective. Doing so gets increasingly difficult. A couple of things are also worth to be mentioned. There are boss enemies that will drop chests at times. And these boss enemies, you can't really outrun them. If you keep running away from them, it looks like there spawns a new guy every time, but in, in reality, it's the same guy that gets tossed onto your screen time and time again, so boss monsters can't be avoided. They will follow you, no matter how, long, how far you run away. Except for that, well, you will see how much fun it is, and I don't want to spoiler all of the, any of the other fun there. Every map is then, well, offering you a lot of unlocks and achievements. The, the more you play, the longer you survive and such things. So I think that's all the basics you need to know. This game is very simple in its basics, but it's a wonderful example for easy to pick up and difficult to master. So we're going right into the next topic now, and that's how to put up a build. So I've been not talking about the items yet too specifically, we're only talking about user interface and such things, but now comes this part. So as you see, up here are your weapons, down here are your passive items. And like I mentioned, it's easy to discern, so weapons usually have something going on for fighters, projectiles, increases damage, increases speed of projectiles, whereas passive items here, character gets 10% luckier, this can't be a weapon, and so on. I guess it's easy enough, but I, I wish the game would be a little bit more specific about that, it's especially when you're new here, but it really comes in really quickly. So, you have six slots for weapons and six slots for passive items. As you see here, every weapon has these tiny dots below it. So this is level ups. So every time you level up a weapon, it grows more powerful. As you see here, the magic wand fires one more projectile. The more I level it up, the more powerful it grows. And leveling up your weapons is extremely important to get somewhere in this game. Right now, it looks like this game is super easy, but don't get yourself fooled here. My character is stupidly overpowered by permanent power-ups, and usually you really need to pay attention to your build, otherwise you will have some problems. So, how to put up a good build? That's pretty easy. First off, don't bloat yourself like I do here. I'm doing it wrong here. I have five different weapons at once. This only works when you're overgeared and overstatted like I am here. Usually you should always try to reduce yourself to three weapons that synergize quite nicely with another. And once you have maxed out these three weapons, you can pick up a new one into your roster. The easiest way to blow up yourself is really to spread yourself a across too many weapons from the get-go like I do it here, but I just wanted to showcase it that once you have enough brute force stat-wise, it all works ultimately. So three weapons or less, sometimes two weapons can be even enough, and how to put up which weapons to pick. Now, I always like to tell myself I need one big AoE weapon, I need one weapon that I can control manually, and I need another weapon that's also, well, either 
big AoE weapon or brings in another quality that I personally like. But the weapon that I can control personally is really, really important in my per in my humble opinion. For example, here it is the magic wand my character starts with. It's a weapon that is always aiming towards the closest enemy. That means I have some say about where a part of my weapons are aimed. There are even other better and more effective weapons for this regard, like you see here the knives I got. All the knives are more of a single target thing, but the knives always shoot the direction you're facing. The whip is a good candidate in this regard too. Why do I say that and why do I think it's so important? So, first off, a directional weapon has gives you a nice opportunity to just shoot open those um, uh, braziers and such, but also it gives you the ability to focus a particular enemy or a particular direction where you want to walk. And believe me, when the game, when the screen's crowded as hell, you will be happy to be able to focus something or somewhere actively. And the rest is just, well, choose weapons that fit well together. I say that easily, but I don't want to spoil you either. Because, you know, lot, the most fun about this game for me was to figure out which weapons work well together and which won't. So, really, knock yourself out. The easiest uh, re recipe for success for me was limit yourself to three weapons max and max them out and check out what happens. There is also another really, really important thing to say, which should have went into the basics, shame on me, but, well... Losing is part of the game. Don't worry about losing. It's okay to lose. It's part, it's part of the fun uh, because you will always unlock things and it'll always help you a lot. So, build-wise, let's talk a moment about the passive items. The passive items have also power-ups here and, well, go crazy. Pick them regarding to your own liking and try out how to improve your own gameplay with that. I don't want to say that certain things are imperative to have. There's only a couple of items that are just so powerful that you shouldn't skip out of them. Namely the duplicator, for example. Don't, don't say no to the duplicator. And another honorable mention goes to the attract orb, because I make the experience increasing the pickup range makes it so freaking much easier to level up especially when your account level is low and you don't have many coins. Being able to suck up the experience early, uh, from, from a high di distance it's really, really cool. Oh, I forgot to mention the floor chickens out there, Bragers. Man, what a guide. So, we're going to talk about the chests now and then we're going to head over into the power-up section. So, chests drop are dropped from bosses sometimes and they give you this nice lottery thing you can, escape, you can press escape to skip that after you have been through this a while and you'll get coins out of that so permanent currency and also you will always rank up one of your items in your position chests will never give you a new item also chests do another thing for you which brings us uh, later into uh, which uh, i'll talk about in a moment they'll also give you a role to evolve one of your items in your possession you can only evolve items via chests and you can only evolve an item when it's max level and you have the proper passive item equipped for that don't want to spoil more about that at this point I'm going to explain which which item you need for which evolution in the last part of the video. So, that's all I want to say about builds. Like everything else, well, try it out for yourself. There are so many different weapons and opportunities that you can go for. I don't want to say that there's a best build or something like that. No, it's just what you want to make it happen. I just made the experience that AoE and directional attacks are what ended up as the most successful um, builds in my own experience and the duplicator. The duplicator is just a overpowered item which you should always pick when you can't have it. Okay, so let's get out of there and get over to the power-up section. So after the game you have a little bit of a readout and you get new things unlocked and most importantly with the coins you've bought you can go for power-ups. So power-ups are pretty simple, straightforward. You increase your stats with that. More attack damage, more cooldowns, or less cooldowns in that regard, more health, 
all these things that we've been talking about, you can increase. So what I personally want to mention here, two things. First off, every upgrade you buy makes the subsequent upgrade more costly. So the more upgrades you have, the more costly all the other upgrades will eventually go. Point two, you can always refund your power-ups without any um, cost or such, so you can always redistribute your coins. Point three, this is just a broken upgrade. You should buy it direct as quick as possible. Another honorable mention here, move speed and magnet were, for me, these three here, were for me personally the most powerful upgrades that I that I felt the most. Move speed, because it's so much easier to dodge your enemies. 10% might not be much, but you really notice them. And 50% more pickup range. Hell yeah, I struggle so much with that. I'd even say, buy Magnet first, and if you can digest the game from this point on, just buy this next, and then go crazy. There's not really much more to say about the power-up se uh, section. Most of these things you need to unlock, and um, they are locked behind the achievements, and if you want to know what you can, what you're missing, check out the achievements bar here. You can always uh, check out what you can do here, and you don't get spoiled too hard about what you unlock there. You only get an information about how to unlock something new. And as you see here, sadly, there's not much more to be done for me except for a few little things. So that's all I want to say about power-ups. I just wanted to explain how to use them. And now, last but not least, we're going to talk about the evolution. So if you don't want to know what kind of passive items are necessary, I explained everything to you and you needed to know. You need a weapon on the max level, you need the proper evolution item or passive item that triggers the evolution, and you need a chest to activate it. You can level up, evolu evolve your weapons. Doesn't work. Now, let's talk about how what items you need. So, collection will tell us. So, whip gets its evolution into the bloody tier. Really cool item because it, it does steal life so this is a healing item what you need for it is the hollow heart if you have a hollow heart you can evolve this thing so the holy wand is a auto fire version of the magic wand i really really like that and it requires the empty tome here i know it's uh, written there but i just want to show you which item it is because the name alone is maybe not that descriptive the knife is very simple Similar to the magic wand, it's uh, firing with it with no delay. Fires with no delay. The, the the only difference here is this is aiming on your enemies on its own. This is aimed by yourself. It upgrades via the bracer, and I personally find it one of the most underwhelming evolved evolved items in game so far. Next thing, the axe evolving into the death spiral. This sends out projectiles out of your character. Pretty nifty, pretty spiffy, deals a lot of damage, can be upgraded with the Candle Labrador, which augments AoE attacks on its own. The Cross is being upgraded into the Heaven Sword, requiring the Clover. The Cross changes itself fundamentally, just like the Axe. It's not the same item anymore. The Cross launches these swords from your character and they can deal critical damage and I consider it a really, really powerful thing to, to clear screens. The King Bible evolves into the Unholy Vespers, requiring the Spellbinder. So this is an, a pretty weird candidate here. So the King Bible, it just never ends when you evolve it. But if you have a spellbinder fully upgraded and you have the duration upgrade out of the item shop, your King Bible doesn't end either. So I really find that also a pretty underwhelming upgrade. And on the other hand, I have to say the unhi the the Holy Bible in itself, I consider it as one of the strongest single target weapons as long as you can freeze your enemy. Now the fire wand evolves into the Hellfire and it requires spinach. This is really, really one of the major things I love. So it evolves into passing, pass through projectiles. So instead of being sought by an enemy, these projectiles just fly for anybody. It's a pretty good weapon. And since spinach is a really nice item that everybody can utilize, I mean, it just increases the weapon damage stat. I like that. So 
garlic evolves into the soul eater so here you need the pomerola to upgrade that thing this is the hp re uh, region item and the evolved garlic is really cool because it is a really large aoe and it how to put it it's a really nice safety net to um Kill everything that's just trying to get close to you. Downside, the damage is relatively low. And in the last 10 minutes of the game, you will really notice that it's not, not enough oomph to really push back enemies on its own. But it's really, really cool. And I can recommend it strongly for everybody who doesn't have a big wallet of coins behind his uh, gameplay so far. Because it really, really eases up the early game a ton. Next up, the Santa Water. So these are bottles that fall from the sky, and the Attract Orb, this is the blue thing here, upgrades it into Labora. I love this upgrade. Seriously, I simply love it. This makes it happen that the um, that the, the fire blobs move slowly towards you. They, they drop onto the, the screen and they move slowly towards you. This makes the whole randomness of this item go away and transforms it into one of the most badass um, damage items I know about. Next up comes the Lightning Ring evolving into the Thunder Loop via the Duplicator. So I really dig that one too. It's pretty simple. It just doubles its action. It, it does one lightning strike and then does another lightning strike with a slight delay. It's just a, it's just doubling the damage. I really like that one, although I don't play it that often, but really since the duplicator is one must-have item, I can only say if you have a duplicator, why not grab a lightning ring as well when it shows up. So the last weapon we talk about is the peach one and the, the ebony wings. Once you have these two weapons fully leveled up, they can transfuse into the vandalier, which is basically the same as these two weapons together. So it's just double the amount of projectiles, double the damage, double the fun. The, the sickest part about the Vandalier is you can level it up again eight times, and it will free up one slot in your, in your inventory. So if you're looking for a sick weapon dealing a ton of damage, the Vandalier is your place to go. And that's all the weapons you can evolve while we're talking about version 0.213. Game's being updated constantly. I'm pretty sure I'll have to update this guide sooner or later. But here we go, guys. That's been all I wanted to tell. Hope you enjoyed and found that helpful. Drop me your comments down below. Feel free to leave a thumbs up. And of course, if you enjoyed, also consider subscribing. There's daily content coming up from my side. You just need to hit that notification bell and you'll stay informed. Until then, have a good one and see you soon. Bye-bye.